Okay guys, so after I made my PSK video, I got some responses talking about ferro rods, or wanting me to talk about ferro rods, and why you should carry one. And I thought about coming out here and doing a nice ferro rod fire, but I actually decided I have quite a bit of footage on that. So today, we're just going to be talking about it. So before we jump into why I think it's a good idea to carry a ferro rod, I think we have to lay down the base of at least what I believe for survival and bushcrafting practice, almost more like a fail-safe for my approach to fire starting and making fires, at least when it comes to fire starters. Because in my opinion, if you don't see eye to eye with this part of fire starting, then basically you're not going to want to listen to anything I have to say about ferro rods. So the first thing that I've said, and I've said this in many different survival talks, many different uh, videos in the past, even the PSK video, and that is that what I, what I talk about fire starters, there's a continuity of fire starting. And what I mean by this is that at minimum in a survival kit or in a bushcrafting kit, there should be at least two different distinct and different methods of fire starting. And when I mean distinct and different, I mean a ferro rod in a lighter, or matches in a lighter, or a Fresnel lens in a ferro rod. There should be distinctly different methods for fire starting, and there are plenty of different ones out there. There's fire pistons, you know, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff I'm not going to get into in this short video, but the fact of the matter is that one, you should be skilled with whatever you carry, and two, you should carry at least two different types, distinct and different types of fire starters. I prefer three different types, and the reason why is, for whatever reason, if your PSK or, you know, your conditions or climates cause a particular fire starter to fail, you should have different types of backup. And what I mean by this is, and I've seen it before, people have had survival kits where they had three Bic lighters. And I can tell you right now that right now a Bic lighter would probably work and would light up. But at negative 50, I have personal experience, Bic lighters do not work at negative 50. So if you have three Bic lighters, that's great, but none of them are going to work. And so it's important to have different types of fire starters that will work in different climates, different situations, in different circumstances. So getting back to the original conversation of this video is ferro rods. Why is it important to have fer a ferro rod? Or why do I think a ferro rod is a valuable piece in the continuity of fire starters? Once again, uh, I'll quickly mention that my three fire starters in my PSK here are waterproof matches, a waterproof lighter, and a ferro rod. So why do I think that the ferro rod is an important one of the three? I really think it is. I think it's important because the ferro rod, when down and out, is a very basic, very no-frills tool that is very hard to fail. Sure, it can break, and that is true, but there are no moving parts to a ferro rod. There is no, there's, there's no moving parts to the ferro rod. There's no uh, real consumables like fluid to the ferro rod, and this is what makes it such a great fail-safe. It means that it can get wet and still work. It can be cold and still work. It can have many different problems occur in many different situations and circumstances, and it's a very shelf-stable product. It's never going to, once again, like a lighter, it's never going to dissipate its fluid, and that fluid can never freeze up because it doesn't have fluid to freeze up or to go cold. So this is what makes it a very stable and very foolproof method. In addition to this, uh, it's a very basic motor skill, so there's no fine, super fine motor skills involved in it. You know, you're not striking a little wheel, you're not trying to hold a match, which, understandably, if you've ever been truly cold, trying to start a fire with a match is not optimal because your hands can be physically shaking like this. Hopefully the video will pick it up. But your hands can be physically shaking like this, and trying to sit there with a little match, trying to start a fire when your hands shaking like this is very difficult. And so having a ferro rod is a little bit more of a gross motor skill because you just hold the rod in one hand, hold the striker in the other, and it's a very basic pulling motion or striking motion. So, like I said, it's a far more gross motor skill that is more usable in cold conditions or in conditions where you're wet and, you know, you are shaking 
in whatever type of circumstance is happening. So that is why I like the ferro rod. It's shelf stable, it's a gross motor skill, and like I said, it really doesn't have any moving parts. Going back to the Murphy's Law, you know, if it can fail, it will. The ferro rod has very little on it to fail, so it's very hard for it to fail. Now, the downsides to the ferro rod, because there are cons to every pro, right? So, of course, one of the biggest drawbacks to the ferro rod is unlike a match, unlike a lighter, it's not in a flame at your fingertips. It is something that just throws very hot sparks, and that's good, but you have to know how to process tinder and or you have to have that tinder included. Which kind of leads me to the next point, and that is that in most realistic survival kits, some may say, you know, that the ferro rod is a weaker fire starter because you have to have something that can catch that spark. But I think in most uh, survival kits, including my PSK, it's very easy to include things like UST wet fire or tinder quicks and different things like that, which are, you know, very easy very easy to start with a ferro rod and so when you take a look at it from a survival kit standpoint you know it is really a realistic uh, thing to carry and it is once again a very easy or reasonably easy with some practice and some training method to start fires and even if my all my chips are down I only have the ferro rod I can still easily come over to a birch tree or use my surroundings you know get some old man's beard and find tinders around me that will start with a ferro rod and the biggest thing what I would say similar to what I've said about uh, survival knives or knives that we use for survival situations is practice 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 with a ferro rod what makes it very effective is the knowledge that you have because I've been out here for so long I've practiced with my ferro rods for so long I can immediately walk out here and even if I don't have tinder on me I know what I can use in my surroundings to get me reasonably immediate fire with a ferro rod so these are some of the biggest pros that I have with the ferrocerium rod or the flint whatever you want to call it it's technically not a flint and steel kind of thing but you know whatever you'd like to call it the ferro rod is its technical name um, or ferrocerium rod is a very solid piece of fire starting equipment and once again I want to make it clear that I don't think you should just throw a ferro rod in your survival kit and call it good I think you should have at least one other type or method of fire starting aside from the ferro rod such as a lighter or such as matches uh, but the ferro rod should be one thing that you should consider because once again even holding a very small lighter when you're shaking like this you know trying to get that fire going it's going to be very challenging so that is what that's my two cents on the ferro rod and overall fire starting in general once again it's really a continuity of fire starters and that's the best way to approach it from the start so Anyways, guys, this is really all I have to say about fire starters and ferro rods, and hopefully you've enjoyed this, hopefully this makes some sense, and hopefully you end up putting a ferro rod in your kit because they are very useful. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.